Simon, first of all, you're the, the head of the Department of Player Safety. Can you just explain what that role entails? Well, basically the role entails that we look at all match penalties given on the night of a game um, and also 2 plus 10s, 5 plus claims, checking to the head and checking from behind. We review that um, from the videos provided and we make a decision whether it's a correct call or whether the call needs to be upgraded to a match penalty and then we assess the bans to the players. You say we, who are you talking about? Who is this we? I can't, I can't go into details, but it is a, it is a, a four or five panel throughout the world. Um, I give them the video, they look at it, and we come to a consensus of opinion about whether it's a correct call and whether, what the ban should be. So it is a, a con consortium of people throughout the world who are all hockey people. And who are these people? Are they people that you've come across? At, do you appoint these people? Um, they are people that I know that are in a high position with inside their federations um, are and at the same level as myself or yeah. even higher. Yeah. Um, so these are people with knowledge and I think between us we have over 100 years worth of knowledge of hockey. So it's a vast experience of hockey. And how important is it to have those people for you to bounce off? It's very good because it gives a balance to the whole process. So it's not just me making a decision on my own, it's, it's, it's between three or four of us, or even five in some instances. It depends on if they're available or not. But it just gives that balance to the whole process. It gives that a different view, a different angle on maybe what, what my thoughts are and what other people's thoughts are. Um, and then we come to a consensus of opinion. Most of the time we are on the same wavelength. In fact, nearly 99% of the time we're on the same wavelength. But we only use the evidence that we, we get provided with. And can you just explain, take me through the process. So, incident happens on Saturday night, you're sitting at home, what happens from there? If it's a match penalty, um, it's reviewed the next morning, if it's the weekend, mm -hmm. or if it's, it's midweek, then it's, it's reviewed the next day. Uh, we cut and clip the, 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 uh, the incident, um, it's sent out. We then, I ask for explanations off the guys, what, it, what, they're, looking, what they're looking at, is it the same as me, what they think. Um, we take it from there. And then, how does it go from there to you making an announcement to the clubs? Um, it, it, uh, we go, we decide how many, what the game ban is, how many, how many games the, the player will get. Um, we then go back to the media um, um, and we put out a media statement. Uh, um, before that, we do tell the clubs um, that the, the ban is in place or it's not in place because it, it goes either way, it can go either way, depending on what we can see. Um, and then it's taken from there, really. If um, most match penalties are a one-game ban and the clubs can't go back and challenge those, anything more than a one-game ban, the, the clubs can come back and challenge us on those. Um, but there is a due process in that as well. Why is that? Why is it that clubs can't challenge a one-game ban? Because that's what the elite league have wanted to, to bring out. That's the league's minimum standard, is the one game. And, and um, what they said is that you can't challenge that, but anything more than one game, you can challenge back um, because that, they want that as the minimum standard. What about if a club decides that they want to challenge an incident? In, in what respect? As in, as in looking at an incident? Yeah, so, so, so if, if, if so the incidents with the, with the Cardiff, and, um, Cardiff and Belfast, Cardiff put a request in to look at two instances that they had seen on the clip from the game. Um, so they looked at that on the Sunday and, and they told me on the Sunday that they wanted to review two, two instances that they could see that warranted, in their view, uh, a, a higher um, penalty that, that was called originally, or no penalty that was called originally, and that, that they wanted us to look at that, which we did. Um, they have to pay a, a fee for us to do that. If they win, or they, it is ju judged to be correct, they get that feedback. If not, then the fee's kept by the league. And then you, you, I guess you look at it and then it's the same as if it was a match penalty, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, that's five games and two plus tens checking from behind and checking to the head. Uh, and uh, uh, so they can review any incident. If they want us to review something like the slew foot or the checking to the head on uh, Peacock, uh, we can review that. And what about Belfast? Do they have any recourse during this process to be able to provide you with, with any evidence that could aid their players' case, if you like. Well, the process is that uh, what Cardiff are looking at is the, the video from the game. So they're only seeing what, they can, what I can see initially. Now, if any club has got something to substantiate 
um, against what what the the team accusing him of uh, shows, then they should put that into us. Um, and we can have a look at that as as evidence outside with what we normally look at. And I think every club should do that if they have that to hand. Um, in the case of Belfast, if if they had that at the time, they could have put it into us, and we would have taken that into consideration. It's an unfortunate circumstances, isn't it, this week, where some pretty compelling evidence arrived, but it arrived following the decision. Yeah, the, the, the process is that we make a decision by Wednesday, so the clubs have time to um, rework if they've got players out, to rework their systems, to look at their systems. This is the request of the coaches to myself, that they'd like to know as early as possible so they can, they can rejig the lines if they need to. Um, so we try and work to the process of a Wednesday that we tell the clubs what's happening with their players. Um, and unfortunately, after the Wednesday, um, five o'clock, end of story. This came in later on than the Wednesday night. We can't take it into consideration because it wasn't done in the timelines. Is it frustrating to you, though, that potentially you could make a, a wrong decision or a decision which is to be proved wrong with evidence further down the line? I think that's always going to happen, especially in, in what the evidence is. So if, I, I would say, again, if any club has got ev evidence to prove otherwise to what we can see on the game tape, they need to get us that in by at least Wednesday morning, so we can take that into consideration and put that through the channels uh, and get a feedback. Um, and yes, it is unfortunate, but we can only go on what's given to us at the time. What are the big changes to the system this year, to the system that was in place last year? Um, I wasn't involved in it last year, so I can't really give you a what happened last year to this year, but we're trying to be more open, more honest, more, more considered in what we do. Um, the thing is with this, we're trying to keep players on the ice, but it's, de it's dependent on what the players do. It's, it's down to them um, whether they stay in the game or not uh, and, and the penalties that are called. Of course, we, we have the final decision on that um, and you know, that's right that we should have that final decision.